it is two o'clock. Uh, we ha will still have a few people coming on board, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rolling because I initially just have a few introductory remarks. Welcome. I'm Mike Malinowski. I'm president of the AIA California Council, and I couldn't be more excited to welcome you to a webinar that is breaking new ground for the AIA in California and actually nationally. As a small firm principal myself, I've been hearing small firm peers for years talking about the need for robust access to 3D BIM tools with favorable training, cost, and license terms. A few years ago, I decided to try and do something about that. I talked to a lot of folks. I launched a national survey on the software needs of small firms, enlisted the support of many others, and then taking what I'd learned, I wrote a letter as the AI California Council president to every major software vendor in America, outlining the potential of working together, along with a short list of requests, perpetual license with option upgrades, robust 360 degree interoperability, and integrated support. Today, I could not be more pleased to be here with representatives of one of America's top BIM software vendors and a group of practicing architects who have undertaken the journey to, toward real world use of this particular tool. This is the rollout of the AICC Member Value BIM software program. We're going to hear and see examples of how this powerful software helps architects get their work done more efficiently and effectively from Tom Simmons, president of Arch Vista. Tom will also touch on the particulars of this limited time offer, which, been using which, will, which will save time and money for those ready to try something different. The coolest part of the support is the guild model we've developed where newbies to the platform can be part of a supportive group of other professionals moving along at the same time. This cements the notion that we're all in this together. You can type in questions anytime. Following Tom's presentation, we'll heal, we're, we, we will hear personal insights into the use of the software by working architects in the trenches, Ron Culver AI with Philonis Architects and Michelle Beebe Associate AI with Rockefeller Partners Architects. And then finally, we'll open it up for conversation and questions. Right now, I'm going to hand it off to Tom Simmons, president of Archa Vista. Take us on a journey that illustrates the benefits of ArchaCAD, Tom. Thanks. Uh, thank you uh, for that introduction. And uh, yes, my name is Tom Simmons. I'm with Arch Vista Consulting. And we are um, representative of GraphSoft and ArchiCAD uh, here in California. And, and I'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to first give you a little bit of an overview about ArchiCAD, how it works, and uh, hopefully give you some insights into how it could help your firm. The first thing I always like to start with is just a real kind of, 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 of introduction about what makes ArchiCAD different. And what I really like to focus on is a very simple component, and that is that architecture, ArchiCAD is about an architectural focused BIM solution. And that's really the most important aspect when you are looking um, at, a, at ArchiCAD versus other solutions on the market is our focus is your business. And that's what you really need to keep in mind as I go through this presentation today and as our clients also share their experience with, the, uh, with ArchiCAD. So first off, um, it's tailored for design. And what I mean by that is that we've actually been working with a number of clients um, uh, here in San Francisco as well as throughout California who are in the process of transitioning from various software solutions to ArchiCAD, um, as well as who ha have, are, are expressing different ways that they want to use BIM in the early design process. And that's really what makes ArchiCAD different. Ian Virtual Associates in, here in San Francisco, for ex example, um, recently has converted from uh, Revit to ArchiCAD because they were very frustrated by using um, SketchUp, or I should say frustrated by doing a SketchUp model in early design and then kind of throwing that model away and starting over and rebuilding the model in Revit. With ArchiCAD, you really can start from the beginning, building your model, and then continuing that through design uh, and into construction documents, as Jeff Prose here talks about. Another good example is Walker Warner Architects. 
um, also based here in San Francisco. Walker Warner actually has been using Arcade for a number of years. One of the things that makes them different is that recently their project managers have started using Arcade in the early design because it's just comfortable. And, you know, as Patrick here, made who's their um, digital design coordinator, discusses, it's, it's really helped them hand off the project much easier or with much more efficiency through their project team because of that uh, process. Now, one of the tools in ARCHICAD is called the Morph Tool. It's very similar to SketchUp, uh, to a SketchUp style push and pull modeling. It's what many of our users use for concept modeling in the early phases of design. And this is why we're seeing more and more and more of our clients starting to use ARCHICAD in the early design process and use it all the way through um, uh, the, the many phases of the architectural process. It's also why we see um, for detail modeling, we're seeing architects use uh, the same morph tool, but for the follow me command. Again, this is a very, another very similar type command in SketchUp, if you know SketchUp. Um, and it really allows you to do quick detail modeling components for your design uh, where you need to really sketch in 3D and be able to sketch forms in 3D. Another really uh, nice connection to ARCHICAD is the Rhino Grasshopper connection. This was just recently introduced in ARCHICAD 20, and it allows for the first time um, live connection between Grasshopper, um, uh, Rhino, and ARCHICAD, and also to be able to, to, to develop and have this, this interaction between a really high-end uh, NURB modeler uh, and parametric modeler that has been very popular with Rhino and, and, and Grasshopper within the ARCHICAD environment. Another important um, uh, feature, uh, or I should say process, of the way that our, our clients use ARCHICAD is for doing um, creating cross-sectional profiles, and that's by doing drafting. For those of you who come from a drafting background, uh, maybe you've used AutoCAD or some other form of 2D drafting, or by hand, you're familiar with the process of doing simple lines and fills to create wall sections and details. With ARCHICAD, you can draw that. And then once that's drawn, I can simply click a button and have that extrude out into a wall like you see here. Interactive 3D cutaways are another nice uh, component of this design process because you can pull a plane across your 3D window and have that start to cut a cross section in your building. This is great for understanding the design, for doing presentations, and also as I'll talk about in a minute for creating detail, 3D detail views. And of course, we ultimately need to show how the designs are going to look. And built into ARCHICAD is something called CineRender. It's built on the Cinema 4D rendering engine. It's a very high-end renderer that can allow you to do rendering such as this um, that can give you uh, a realistic view and your client a realistic view of your design ideas. There's also energy analysis built right into the model. So as you're actually building the model, Every material, every component of ARCHICAD can have uh, material information for thermal conductivity, density, heat capacity, and other information. We can also uh, develop operation profiles and begin to create energy analysis for the purpose of early design so that we have a better understanding of how our building is impacting the environment. Objects is another component I want to talk about. ARCHICAD has a lot of objects and, and a lot of flexibility with objects. One of the things that's really important is that we have a very large library. It has lots of doors and windows. It has lots of options to change the doors and windows. And, of course, it has a whole complex, uh, a whole category of other types of objects within uh, the software. And we can, we can take these objects and we can create a multitude of variations of these objects using parameters. That said, I don't care how big the, uh, the, the, the library is within the program, there's obviously a multitude of other types of objects out in the world. So that's where we can also have access to manufacturer settings, and we can bring those settings into ARCHICAD to then um, set the, the ARCHICAD, ARCHICAD objects to reflect those settings. We can also have access to a multitude of other types of objects on the web. Uh, for instance, the uh, 3D warehouse that many of you may use with SketchUp um, is accessible within ARCHICAD. So I can go out there and bring many other objects that may have been built by other users of SketchUp, or by manufacturers directly into the program. And then when it comes into ARCHICAD, it'll create a nice 2D and 3D view of that, uh, of that element. And then I can use it for even doing um, uh, schedules, and I want to track that, those elements. 
It also gives me access to um, uh, other Autodesk 3D formats. So if, if you find objects on the web that use FBX, OBJ, 3DS, or DAE formats, this gives you access to really uh, the wealth of objects that are available uh, uh, out there in the internet, in, in, uh, on the web. Another important aspect of ARCHICAD is documentation. And I should say it's important in, in that we can really, one, using a, a simple one or two click, be able to create documents for the model. And why is this important? Well, first, um, ARCHICAD not only can be used to create construction documents, which most people think about, it's incredible, but also it's an incredible page layout design program. Uh, we can bring in, place PDFs, JPEGs, PNG, PNG files, BMP files, PICs, and a multitude of other types of formats onto our layouts and use it as a means to create uh, uh, material sheets, to create uh, presentation sh uh, boards, and many other types of, of marketing material that we obviously use in the process of doing presentations and the process of our work. But of course, what we ultimately at the end of the day get paid for is construction documents. And ARCHICAD can really do construction documents beautifully. How does it do it? Well, first, we create a uh, drawing for the model. When we draw a model in ARCHICAD, it's actually a 3D model. And when we actually create a section by drawing a section onto uh, our plan, as we're showing here, uh, that section will then um, pull out a uh, view automatically from our uh, model into a section window where we can then add notes, add dimensions, and begin to embellish that detail for that section further. And as BIM models, uh, the efficiency of BIM models, of course, is that it automatically updates the model. As I make changes in my model, as I, in this case, move a door in elevation, it's going to update that door in plan, in section, and uh, schedules and any other views that are associated with this particular door's uh, uh, change within the model. We can also extract details. Using our detail tool, we can uh, develop uh, and, 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 and uh, define what kind of marker we want to use. And then we actually go in and we begin to draw onto our uh, model and place that section symbol and describe where we want to pull the detail from. And then we open that detail drawing it opens that drawing, and we can begin to edit that drawing as a 2D line environment, which is really nice. That means you don't have to worry about modeling everything to you know, a really detailed level. You can just model it to kind of a simple level, and then begin to add line work and begin to embellish that detail further, and begin to place notes and dimensions onto it to ultimately create the final detail that you need in a similar environment to the way you worked before with 2D drafting, but using the power of that 3D model. One of the other things that a lot of our clients are doing more and more is to extracting 3D details for communication and construction documents. This is a good example here for one of our clients. It's a very easy thing to do. You simply take the marquee tool, you describe on the plan where you want to pull that, that uh, um, information from, and you simply open it. And when you open it, it's going to open into a 3D window, and you can then navigate and move around that, that particular 3D view. And then at any point in time, you can right-click, say Capture Windows a 3D document. It's kind of similar to SketchUp. If you've already put, uh, uh, used SketchUp for doing, uh, or, or, or uh, grabbing up a, a view like this. And then I can place dimensions. I can place notes. I can begin to embellish this particular view further. And then ultimately use it um, within my construction document view. Another important aspect to ARCHICAD into a BIM tool, and something you really always want to look at, is does it take the intelligence of the database and use it for more than just the modeling? Here in ARCHICAD, we actually use it for everything, including being able to automatically update our um, detail tags, our section tags, and other types of tags within the software. When you first place a section symbol, for example, it has this kind of cryptic DR, GID, LAYID kind of uh, description. But once we go to a layout in ARCHICAD, and then we place a drawing onto that layout, it then knows exactly what layout that drawing is on. And then it goes and updates the symbol with the layout number and the position that it's on the layout. So in this layout's A09. Now when I go back to that section symbol, it's going to show this has been automatically updated. For those of you who have done redlining, you know this is one of the biggest problems with trying to coordinate drawings on, uh, on sheets 
and then making changes to your section bubbles and detail bubbles and everything else as you move sheets around and drawings around on the sheets. Additionally, we also have bi-directional model-based schedules. And what this means is that you can actually go in and as you're placing the doors into your project, it's automatically updating your schedules. It's inputting information on the, the door. It's, it's allowing you even to change the door size or material or information within the schedule. And it goes back and updates that within the model and any views associated with that. And of course, it's not just limited to door schedules. It can be finished schedules, plumbing schedules, window schedules, and much more. If you work on projects where you're doing renovation work, ArchiCAD is a great renovation tool. And the way it works is it basically allows you to eliminate layers. Um, in essence, you need only one layer for walls, for example, because it has the ability to manage it um, graphically through our renovation filters. So what happens is that we go and we uh, select demolition plan, and we select the wall that we want to demo. We click the bulldozer button. Very simple idea that's going to be demoed, so you need a bulldozer to you know, bulldoze it down. Um, but when you click that bulldozer button, it changes it to a dashed red line. Now I change this from demolition plan to app to new construction. Turns that information off because it knows intelligently that that's demo information. And now I'm going to draw the wall. Type in it's two feet six inches long. And it'll create a new wall that has a different graphic from my existing walls. Because it knows, because I clicked the little crane button over there in the palette, that new construction is to be shown in a different graphic means than existing or demo. Once I've, once I've created whatever is new and, and I've defined whatever is demo, I can go in and save the view. And this is kind of the basic way that ArchiCAD works. It's kind of like a viewport, model port, kind of uh, 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 in, in AutoCAD. It's similar to that. So here I'm saving a view, and that view is an existing view. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to click again, and I'm going to change this to my demo. And I'm going to click my Save View again. I'm going to save as a demo view. And finally, I'm going to do it one more time where I click that, uh, change this to New Construction, and save it as a New Construction view. And that's it. At this point, I can take these views. I can double-click them to move uh, uh, to each view. But more importantly, I can also take any one of these views and drag it onto a layout, much like I did the section a second ago. And then I've got my, my drawing for my project. Uh, mobile. We'll talk about this in more detail in a minute with, uh, as we get into our client examples. But we're, in real general, we've got a BIMX app. It allows us to actually take the model and then publish it to your mobile devices, where you can send it to your client or, or be able to review uh, your um, uh, model within um, uh, meetings. And it also allows you to be able to uh, link your drawings to your model through that BIMX device. It's a really popular, in fact, one of the most popular components of ArchiCAD right now. Is that people really love to use this for presentations and in the field uh, during construction. Collaboration. Obviously, we need to collaborate. And there's several components I want to talk about here. First, ArchiCAD works on all OS platforms. It's native to it. It means that if you're a Windows uh, office and you go home and you've got a Mac, that means you can use ArchiCAD on both environments. Uh, you can uh, collaborate on both environments. It's really uh, a, a very easy program to use um, on Windows and Mac. And it also works, as I mentioned, on iOS for um, your iPad or iPhones, as well as any Android devices. If you're working as a team, we have team collaboration built into the software. Uh, it allows multiple people to share the project, to reserve workspaces in it, and to be able to review um, uh, information that you may want to, to share. It also, um, that teamwork is, is, is managed by something called the BIM server. It comes with ArchiCAD. And it allows you to, uh, or basically what it does is it manages the conflicts. It manages the people in the project. It manages the project history. This is important because if you are going to be sharing and collaborating, you want to make sure that you've got a really strong, uh, secure data level server managing and backing up your data um, on your devices. And then finally is BIM Cloud. This has recently been introduced by Graphisoft. It's basically the BIM server features plus. Um, it works for multi-offices. So if you're an office that has an office locally and you have another office in another part of the state or another part of the country or the world, it allows you to share that model really easily 
um, and to scale the server resources. And more importantly, is if you're using BIMx, you can also do redlining in the BIMx app and have that redlining go automatically back into your model so you can keep a history of that. And of course, if you're working with our friends at Autodesk, then you can share that model um, into Revit. Um, there's actually a Revit uh, add-in connection here that can go right into Edit and right into Revit so that you can uh, export from Archicad to there. And of course, we can export from Archicad to Revit. And it's integrated with the DWG uh, format and other industry formats as well. Uh, we've been doing this for a number of years, so we, it allows us to actually uh, support X-referencing and, 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 and many other formats uh, within the industry. And finally, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this Archicad AIACC BIM bundle. Really great uh, opportunity. So between now and the end of the year, what uh, the AIACC has, has put together for us is um, uh, several things. First, um, you're going to be able to get 25% off software, which is uh, really, I, I'm honestly, is huge. I've not seen it like this. This is a great deal they're doing for their members, for you. And so with Archicad 20, which has everything I talked about, uh, it's meant for BIM server collaboration, as a center of light simulation and everything else. Or Archicad 20 Solo, which is meant for solo practitioners or small firms. Um, it doesn't include the uh, teamwork BIM server collaboration component or the light simulation, but it includes everything else I've talked about. And it works really well for, uh, uh, for the needs of small firms. Now it's a bundle. It means it's not just you're getting 25% off, you're also getting eight hours of training free. Uh, this will start in January. We've actually coordinated this with the AIA, and we will be having a weekly one-hour session starting on January 25th, excuse me, um, and we're going to be going between uh, myself and another person uh, within GraphSoft, Kyla, uh, and we'll be going back and forth uh, teaching you um, everything from concepts in that navigation to virtual building organizations, site and shell, and, and various other concepts of Archicad to help you learn the program and successfully integrate that into your business. And if you want more information about it, you can go up there to blog.graphsoftus.com slash AIACC-BIM-Bundle. So with that, I am going to hand this off to Ron. Thanks, Tom. Uh, this is Mike. Ron, take it away. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm working for Michael Falonis Architects, and uh, this office has been using Archicad for about 10 years now. And um, I'm going to show you some of the uh, projects that have come out of this office using Archicad and what it has done for this office. And then I'll also tell you, I've been using it for 11 years mostly in my own firm, and now with Michael Falonis Architects. So if you can go to the first slide. Um, this project is uh, right now in uh, uh, plan check corrections, and it's fully developed with Archicad, and straight through from uh, design concept through uh, construction documents. And it's a 90-unit mixed-use building um, at the corner of Lincoln and Colorado in Santa Monica. So some of the advantages that, that I see using the, the software is that it is fully integrated. We're using it in multiple workstations, everybody working on the same project at the same time with no, no problems whatsoever. Um, when we model an element in the project, it is something that can go straight to a detail. And uh, it's much more efficient than some of the other processes. You go to the next slide. Here's some um, other views of this this project. So it's mixed use of residential over commercial space. And you've you know three levels of subterranean parking. No problem in terms of file size or materiality. These particular images were were not rendered in house just because it of the efficiency of, of operating it, but I'll show you some that were. And these were done in um, Archicad probably 17 through 19. We've yet to upgrade to 20 and seen some of the rendering opportunities. You can go to the next slide. It's just an interior view of the same project and the next slide. 
So here's another project that um, we have the design architects on, and uh, it's something like 60 units of mixed use over commercial space next to a library here in Santa Monica. Um, so uh, all the things that Tom said in terms of efficiency and, and speed, but we've, we've got some examples. If you can go to the next slide and just keep shuffling through them, it'll be fine. Um, we've got some examples of projects where we're the design architects. This one, which is um, on 6th Street, and it has just been handed off to an executive architect a couple of uh, months ago. And what we've seen from a, of a project that we can go straight through with Archicad and not lose any information, but only build on the information as the project develops, what we've seen is that this particular firm has taken it from our Archicad model and converted it to 2D CAD to work on floor layouts and then converted that to a SketchUp model and then ultimately they're going to go into Revit, which is a crazy waste of time of efficiency and um, something we highly recommend not doing, something that ArchiCAD does beautifully well all in one step, one continuous step. You can go to the next slide. Um, in terms of uh, starting up people in a, in a firm, for example, that have never used ArchiCAD before, it's actually a much faster transition than you might think. There are training sessions that you can go to. When I first started learning in 2005, I, I did a, f a, few, a few days of training just so I could understand how the software was different because I'd never used BIM software before. But anybody who's used Revit would probably find this a dream to work with. Um, I found it very simple to, to take uh, people that never used it and just get them working on one aspect of it, maybe some 2D line work on a detail, something that they're very familiar with, and then show them how it's modeled. And with, essentially, within a few days, they are up and running and contributing to the office and, and contributing to the projects um, without any real waste of, of effort. So it's very simple to use, and the more people find out about its capabilities, they become more efficient at it and, and more valuable to a firm using it. Um, and you can go to the next slide. And this is just a small project that was that um, I was working on in this office that is just a three-unit condominium where we just found it more efficient to do all the renderings in-house and, and this is a, there was a limited turnaround time for getting the renderings out and so I think I probably spent about a day to develop these renderings and then a few hours of Photoshop work and go to the next slide. So this was, and this was not in the latest ArchiCAD. This is using, I think it's a, uh, uh, might have been Maxon render, I'm not even sure. Um, but as you can see, it can certainly convey the appropriate information. It was, it was enough for this project. And you go to the next slide. All of these have to be run through the Santa Monica ARB and you can even do sort of combination of elevation and perspectival renderings to get people uh, images. This is one of the required drawings that, that Santa Monica has and so it's very easy to, to do this and this this particular rendering probably took about 15 minutes of rendering time. Not very long at all. Um, so that's that's all I have to say. I'm open for questions if anybody has any later on. Hey, thanks, Ron. That was uh, that was great. Beautiful, beautiful work. Next, uh, I'm happy to turn it over to Michelle B. B. Associate AI with Rockefeller Partners Architects. Hi. So my name is Michelle B. Thanks. Thank you, Michael, for introducing me. Um, I've been with Rockefeller Partners Architects for a little over four years now. Um, we're a small um, architectural firm based in El Segundo. We've got about 12 employees. And we've been Graphisoft users ever since um, 2002 when our firm started. Next slide, please. 
Initially, we decided to use ArchiCAD because we were a Mac-based office, and it was one of the few 3D modeling drafting program programs that worked really well on Macs at the time. Um, and some of you listening may be considering like what it would be like to transition to using ArchiCAD, and I think the story that I have to tell of our firm's transition will be really relevant to those of you who are currently using AutoCAD or 2D drafting software or those of you who are currently preparing your construction documents in one program and then using a separate model for like a separate 3D model for client visualization because even though we've been using ArchiCAD since 2002 that's that's still the transition that we're we're making so um, up until a few years ago we were using ArchiCAD kind of like a just like a high-tech drafting program we would use some of the 3d elements um, and features but when it would come to sections and elevations we often disconnected the model and just drafted them and then for a client visualization we would build an entirely separate SketchUp model um, a couple things led us to take steps in making our chain the change to using only ArchiCAD for both CDs and three um, and 3d work um, one of the biggest reasons was the desire to eliminate all of the double work that we were doing. Like, there was the SketchUp model was always out of date, or the ArchiCAD one of the models was always out of date. And then the second reason was just um, seeing what ArchiCAD could do, seeing other firms that were using it to its full potential, and then thinking, well, why, why aren't we doing that? Why can't we do that? And um, let's try it. So um, this project that we're looking at right now is the Tides Hotel. It is a um, bluff top hotel in beautiful Pismo Beach, California. Um, it's currently in schematic design and is about to undergo a city planning review. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? One of the big benefits to using the, the ArchiCAD model for um, all of our drawings was just like I said a huge reduction in drawing coordination time because we could use it to generate our elevations or sections um, and nothing was ever out of date because it was all taken from this 3d model um, we began the 3d model early in in schematic design and um, like you see how each of these buildings is um, canted in slightly different angles. This was for different views. This was to um, avoid different easements. It was an as very aesthetic. And all these angles were changing um, very frequently. So it was huge not to have to correct, um, correct any elevations or sections or um, floor plans as the model was, as the model was developing. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? So as you can see, this was a live section. Um, when, whenever any of these buildings changed, like slightly in elevation or in angle, it was all instantly updated, and that was fantastic. Next slide, please. Um, another aspect to this project that was really um, challenge or it was a huge help in ArchiCAD was the steep topography of the site. So what um, this little video is showing you is how you can use the mesh tool to um, select a line from like your survey and then input the height and then have it instantly update on the mesh topography model. That was a huge time saver um, and it was really quite easy to use. Um, complex topography used to always be one of my biggest annoyances because um, if we were drafting it, it wouldn't be, um, it would, was always a bit of a struggle to figure out where is this topography line. And then if we were, if I was modeling it in a, we used to use SketchUp a lot. Um, in SketchUp, SketchUp would, it would be difficult to modify if any of the elevations changed. So this was a huge a huge time saver. Um, next si slide, please. Um, this is also showing you how we use a solid element, element operations tool to 
um, to show landscape and hardscape elements um, and have it cut to the topography. So this was a, another like huge time saver, great visualization tool because um, in doing so we could just have a very simple like fill type object in plan and we could edit it very easily and always have it cut to the topography and we never had to um, adjust each of them, each of the topography separately. Uh, next slide. Earlier you heard about a lot of the compatibility with um, other programs. One of the things that we appreciated was how um, ARCHICAD was SketchUp compatible. Um, and over the summer we had one of our interns um, model the um, site topography, like all the green buildings that you see highlighted, and she modeled it in SketchUp. And we were able to not lose any of that information and, and instead just bring it all as a, as a mesh into ARCHICAD. Next. We, well, I personally, I love the module function. We um, used 3D modules for the units. Um, it's a hotel, so there's a lot of repeating elements. Um, and that was a really easy way to um, keep things organized and efficient. We also um, use the teamwork function in our office. So um, there's a team of like maybe three of us, three to four of us working on this project and we can all work on it at the same time as needed. Next. Like Ron was telling you guys earlier, the rendering, um, the rendering program in the new ARCHICAD is fantastic. As you can see here, these renderings were done very quickly. Um, my coworker Ethan prepared them and he, I think he spent less than an hour on them and it really conveys, um, I think they really do a great job of conveying what the hotel units would be like. And um, on the left, you can see it's a more realistic render. And then on the right, he did an, a more artistic overlay of a sketchy edge overlay, which ArcCAD has those, um, those filters as well over a realistic render and made it more of an artistic sketchy look. Next slide. And last but not least, I'd like to um, just tell you how much I love the BIMX feature. Um, as you can see, this is um, me with the Tides project on my phone. I love being able to, like, it's always in my purse, in my pocket. Um, I can show any of my friends or, um, like, anyone what I'm working on at any time, and it's really fun for me. I know that my coworkers in our office have a lot of fun um, navigating on their phones or their iPads, and our clients actually pick it up really easily too. It's just a, I mean, everyone downloads apps. It's just an app you download, and then you download the model, and it's very easy to use. So, um, in summary, was has this been a a fun transition to make um, or a beneficial transition it's been it's definitely been a huge time saver it's been um, it's been really fun actually too it seems like everything is done in a smarter way and I really appreciate that I was talking with Michael and we we're trying to think of things that um, some of you might be um, concerned about as you think about your transition um, and one of the things would be like, what, who would I hire now? What would the employee market be like? And, um, and then what is the time frame for an individual without ARCHICAD experience to start feeling comfortable in this program? So over the past four years I've been at, at this firm, I've seen, <clears throat> I've seen our firm hire some college grads or interns, and they primarily come with skills in AutoCAD or Rhino experience. Um, yeah, in those with those programs, um, we've hired a couple young professionals with two to five years of AutoCAD experience, and then we've hi hired a couple of experienced ARCHICAD users. That's the type of group that we've hired 
mostly so far. And the transition time that I've seen really depends on the person. Like Ron was saying earlier, um, some people, they pick it up really quickly. I've seen a couple days as well for someone to feel comfortable. And then sometimes for some people who don't feel so comfortable with it, they it takes a little bit longer, like maybe a couple weeks to a couple months. But um, they're still able to be productive during that time. It just takes them a little longer to feel comfortable themselves. For um, new users coming from a drafting background, um, it's it would probably take um, a little bit longer, but like Ron experienced it was just a few days for him. He was coming from a drafting background. For Arctic ad users coming from another BIM platform, I think it would be pretty pretty seamless. I've taken some basic Revit in school and I found the tools in ARCHICAD to be nearly identical, um, just remarkably similar. So it was very easy for me to transition. And then um, another question that you might be wondering is just what is the technical aspect to setting up ARCHICAD and um, if that's complicated. And so we just upgraded our ARCHICAD um, over this past summer and it was actually very seamless. The ARCHICAD IT support staff, they just sent instructions to our IT consultant and he set it up on a Monday, sorted out a couple of bugs on Tuesday and then we were, we were good to go. So um, that's what I have to say about our firm's experience in those areas. So overall, ARCHICAD has been a great fit for our firm and we highly encourage anyone of you who's considering it to, to try it out. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Michelle. What a, what a great job. Uh, I mean, we've really covered uh, a, a broad swath of uh, both different approaches to using the tool, the power and features of the tool, the program, the special offer. And at this point, I'd, I'd like to open it up for uh, questions, comments, uh, conversation. Michael, this is um, a question from Mich um, Julie. She asked, Michelle, can you give specific questions of what the module function can do? Hi, so um, about the module function. So what the module is, is it's, um, it is, if you use SketchUp, it's like a component. It um, is where you can have one instance and you modify that instance and it change updates all of the different um, times you placed that um, instance. So in, our, in AutoCAD, I think it's called a block. Um, and what it can do is um, basically it just saves you time because you um, don't have to modify the same thing, like in my case, a um, hundred times because then there were a hundred hotel rooms that I could just um, modify in one location and they would modify everywhere. Great. Thank you. And we have a question from Eric. This is for you, Tom. Does a single user license allow for installation both on a desktop and on a laptop? I wouldn't use both simultaneously, but at job sites, having the model on a laptop would be essential. Uh, the answer is yes, it does. You can buy a single license, and then you can just simply move it from one computer to the next, back and forth as much as you want. Uh, you can you install it on both computers, and um, either through a hardware key or moving back and forth, or a software key, you can do it either way. And the other thing that's really nice is that if you have a Mac, for instance, at the office, and a Windows computer you're using at home, same thing, just go back and forth. Yes, it does allow you for that. Thank you. And one other um, user question from John. As a solo user, what is the yearly cost to update ARCHICAD? Uh, so that's the great thing about ARCHICAD. It is, um, you own it when you purchase it, okay? And then it's up to you as to when you want to uh, update it. Um, but the, if you want to update it yearly, uh, it costs $700 a year um, to uh, be on subscription with Graphisoft and to be able to update that and have it updated each year. And so it's actually really affordable. Hey, let me pile on that question, Tom. This is Mike. Uh, so if you have a if you have a drawing done in an older 
version of ArchiCAD. Uh, obviously, you could open it with a newer version, but but how about uh, uh, licenses that are out of sync? In other words, you've upgraded two, but but not upgraded two. Can you save down to a previous version and and be able to use uh, licenses that are not necessarily aligned in terms of the version? Yes, you can use um, uh, various versions on your computer. For example, we just had a, a client today, in fact, who's upgrading for an older version. Um, and while she upgrades to the newer version, um, she wants us to, be able to still be able to use her older version for, for projects on that version. So she can still use both at the same time. Both. Um, and then if you're working on um, a project that is uh, uh, on an older version, you want to have one on the new version, and then using another one on the older version, you could save backwards one uh, version back. Um, but one, well, one of the things that's always hard is that if you so save back too many versions, you might end up like saving uh, the file back to a version that, for example, didn't have a morph tool and doesn't know what to do with a morph, and then it would become a problem. So they, they do allow you to save backwards one step, one version back, um, but that's, that's as most as you can go is, is one version back. OK, thanks, Tom. I didn't mean to jump in, Amy, but I, I just thought that would be an interesting additional question. Absolutely. Um, I'm not seeing any other um, written questions from attendees. Uh, attendees can also, um, quote unquote, raise their hand and I can unmute you if you would like. Um, we can also address um, some other questions that people might, um, might be thinking but maybe not typing in at this point, um, if you want, Mike. Yeah, that's great. I, I I think we mentioned this already, but we are recording this webinar, so I hope that those are online. We'll pass the word along to others that they know or work with that might be interested in this opportunity. It is only an opportunity till the end of the year. Uh, this took a lot of uh, negotiation and back and forth between the uh, leadership of the AIA and California and the leadership at uh, Graphisoft, and uh, that we're serious about that that deadline, it's December 31st, and so we'd like to get the word out and make sure as many are aware of this opportunity as, as possible. And uh, th those who missed the webinar will be able to, uh, to watch it online. There'll be a link on the AICC website so that uh, they can see all the, the power of the program and the experiences of firms that are actively using the software. And Thanks, Mike. We did get another question in um, from Eric. What kind of tech support is available after the initial eight sessions or lesson packages? Uh, well, so there are, I mean, internal to ArchiCAD, there are, uh, there's a lot of actually training videos that are um, available. If you go to the help menu in ArchiCAD and you pull it down, there's a YouTube's uh, link there. It's a YouTube's channel. And um, Graphsoft um, creates a lot of training material that's available for free. In fact, um, they were written up, I think it was in AEC Bytes uh, recently, that in reviewing, I think it was the ARCHICAD 20, um, the, the reviewer discussed how ARCHICAD leads the market in um, uh, providing really valuable and good training tools and help tools for uh, the user. And to amplify that, Tom, uh, this idea of a guild model so that if there are people who are all learning how to use the software in a work environment at the same time, there will be an opportunity to uh, sort of turn to your peers and find out what are they doing a, about a particular issue or how are, how are they handling it? They need to put a decal on a perforated metal screen. How, how do you do that? Uh, or, or some other thing that maybe doesn't come up except once in a blue moon. So there, there's that additional uh, value that belongs to this uh, AICC program and that we're all, those who are moving forward to adopt this as a new platform, you're doing it as part of a group of other uh, firms and people, and uh, so there, there's an opportunity there for some camaraderie and some, uh, some peer support. We have any other, any other questions, Amy? Um, no other questions, and let me just check to see if anybody's raised their hand. I, that is um, it so far. What we can do is we can be sure to send out how to activate and also the handout that is attached to this program to everybody. Um, and you can follow up further um, with Robin or Tom. 
Great. And I'm always thrilled as a leader to give people back a few minutes of their day. I know time is the most precious resource for all of us. So ending a few minutes early is a good thing, not a bad thing. So uh, thank you all for taking time out of your busy days to join us to learn about the AICC BIM software membership benefit and, uh, and, and find out more about the incredible power of this software tool and the uh, real world experiences of those who have adopted it and are using it every day in creating great architecture in the state of California and beyond. And uh, feel free to send emails if you have questions that come in afterward. Uh, again, there's uh, links and the flyers, uh, PDF you can click on. There's uh, contact information on that and lots of ways to, to get back in touch. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, with that, uh, I think we'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, Tom, Rob, and uh, Michelle.